Hi, I'm Stephen Hand from Archery Supply. Today we're going to look at the PSE EVL 34. The bow's new for 2021. So it came out in 2020, um, but it's a 2021 bow. So PSE released their bows in about September. Now they've been hard to get, so let's just sort of state that up front. So you can kind of get them, they're around, but stuff is hard to get at the moment with COVID. So the EVL 34. 34 inches axle axle so from there to there um, can be used for either target shooting or 3d shooting brace height a little bit under 7 inches um, IBO speed of 338 with the um, EC cam which is this one this is the bigger cam which goes out to 31 inches so from 26 to 31 I'm pretty sure now it also comes in the smaller cam which is the SE cam and that's the cam you'll see on your target bows so the cam's a little, same sort of shape, just a little bit smaller, so it goes to about 30 inches, two feet per second faster. Now I get asked a lot of questions, should I go for the big cam or little cam? Now on the PSE Super, it comes on an EM cam, which is a smaller cam, or the SE cam. The bigger the cam, generally the smoother the draw cycle. Now, you'll see the smaller cams are a little bit faster by about two feet per second. Now, some people say it's because it's more efficient, I think it's because the brace height is that much smaller, so you've got a little bit more energy going through. Look, whatever it is, the bigger cam's going to be a smoother draw cycle, and it's up to you which one you go for. Um, so, I have shot both cams, and I'm currently shooting a smaller cam because some of the professionals go, well, it's more efficient, you'll shoot better with a bow towards its maximum draw length. I did not see any difference in my scores and the way the bow shoot the way the bow shot for me between the bigger cam and the smaller cam um, the speed I cannot pick the difference I do feel the difference in the bigger draw cycle okay so the bigger the cam the smoother the draw cycle we do notice that so this one has got the bigger cam um, I call it the long draw version so either the EC or the um, SE you've got two stabilizer holes one here and one here now this bow replaces the PSE bows of 2020, which was the NXT 31, 31 inches, the NXT 33, 33 inches, and the NXT 35 are 35 inches. Um, so they've got now 32 or 34. So you got stabilizer hole there and there, and a rear stabilizer, rear stabilizer hole down the bottom. It comes in a whole bunch of really good colors. This is the QE Verde um, color, and it look, it feels nice. It feels thick. I'm going to say the paint feels quite thick on it. Metal limb pockets here, which is pretty standard. Um, you'll see the, the target bows have a wedge lock system, so it pushes the limbs out. This one doesn't have that. However, on the side here, you still these um, pockets still bolt into the, into the limbs. So here, this presses into the limb. So if you're going to take these limbs off for some reason, um, you must loosen these bolts off. You do not need to loosen these bolts for wanting the bow up or down, but you need to loosen them for um, for taking the limbs off. Right, so the, um, limb, the limb bolt goes into this here, which is really nice. It makes it nice and smooth for winding up or down. This little sticker here um, hides, hides the fact that how much extra um, limb bolt Thing you've got how much more adjustment you've got on this bow you've got 10 turns now you'll see the limbs do not have a lot of pretension on them so um, just wiping off the water so basically for I've been selling this bow for about a year now um, I don't think I've had any warranty claims I don't think I have um, so quite a few of them um, Look, I've probably had a dry fire, but I had a dry fire the other day. The guy came into my shop, 70 pound bow, and he was drawing back the bow and the knock was broken, the knock fell off, and he said, I saw the arrow fell off and instead of letting down the bow, I pressed the button. Anyway, the bow was fine. It didn't break the cams at 70 pounds, and he's a big guy, so he'd be like, you know, 30 inch drawer. So maximum poundage, the cams were fine, the strings were fine. I actually think the string came off because I feel like we had to re-put the string back on his bow. Limbs were fine. There was not a thing wrong with the bow. Um, carbon cable rod, roller cable slides. 
I do feel like I have replaced a set of cams though for someone. Um, but I don't think I've done any limbs. So most of my limbs that I do do are when people put them in bow presses. So I'm going to say that. Um, if you're putting bows in bow presses, just wind them as much as, as little as you need. So I normally roll the string on and off the cam in the bow press. So it's basically when I'm pressing a bow, it's under less tension than physically drawing the bow. Um, so the limbs are moving less in the bow press for me than when you're just shooting the bow. Um, right, so the balance of the bow, look at that, perfect. Perfect, straight up and down. Now the mass weight of this bow is about 4.7. Um, it does come in target colors. You've got multiple sight holes here um, where you can move your sight up and down, which is quite nice. Only the one hole there. Um, now, what I want to say is Dan Jasser, one of the PSC sales reps or staff shooters, professional shooters, shot a 720 round with one of these, which is 50 meters. It's a world archery round. I shot a 70, I'm going to say a 704, but it might be a 702. Anyway, anything over 700 is world class, and he shot it with a hunting bow. Um, now, it looks pretty. Hopefully, I'll throw a photo of it. Look pretty, and I was like, that is a pretty bow. Um, okay, so what changed from the NXT 35 to the um, EVL 34? This is the 35, this is the 34. So they've changed some machining on the riser. Um, obviously the, the wedge lock system's now gone. Um, they've changed the yoke system. So on the 2020 version, it was a floating yoke. On the 2021 version, you can actually twist up the yokes here. So it's a three-piece string set. So that's better if you're going to replace your strings because you've only got three strings to make. Now, with bows, when you're tuning, and if you're tuning, I'm going to, like, I feel like doing a video on an untuned bow versus a tuned bow on tuning because people get so concerned about tuning. Um, so I had a customer come to my shop, and he was getting a left tear or a right tear. Anyway, when we shot the bow, we got exactly the opposite tear. <laughs> um, so you generally move your cams to the direction of the tail of the tear. Now, I'm going to say most PSE bows shoot back on from the factory. With a yoke system, you can actually twist up the cables on one side. And with this yoke system, you can twist up the cables on one side to get the same um, effect of moving your cam. So... That's the advantage of this cam system. The other advantage is it's um, cheaper to make. Three strings versus five. Now the disadvantage is you can, if you don't get both of these balanced, then you're obviously going to get that balance incorrect. So it's got advantages and disadvantages of a floating yoke system. A floating yoke system is always balanced. Um, Right, you've got the ability to fit a two-piece quiver, which is unfortunate because PSC don't have one. Um, but you can fit the PSC sling in here. So a sling which goes over your, so over your shoulder, it clips in here, um, and then you can carry your bow over your shoulder, which is quite a nice sling. All right, let's have a look at the draw cycle. So this is a 60-pound bow. Oh, one of the things which is really nice about PSC go through a few things is this is adjustable um, draw length so you just basically move this yoke forward or back to increase or decrease your draw length they're adjustable in half inch increments um, a being the longest letter so this is moving it back that way um, and L being the shortest moving the draw stop basically the draw stop is going to hit here so making that hit here quicker um, so shortening your draw length um, half an inch, you don't need a bow press to do it. Now, let off is adjusted up here. It goes from 90 to 80%. Now, you can buy different modules for PSEs. You can buy low let off modules, fast modules. Fast modules increase the speed by about five feet per second. Um, and low let off modules are a six. So, at the start, 
when I haven't even drawn it, it's solid. It's really solid at the start. So here it's a 60 pound bow. Now it's getting lighter. It's getting lighter very early in the piece. Lighter, 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 valley. So when you get back here, it's dead, dead. Like it's just a, cannot move it. So I'm gonna take the shot. see my hand is completely like relaxed around the bow the bow does not move at all it's quiet there's no vibration and when people say look what's the difference between a $1,400 bow and a $200 bow or a $500 bow or an $800 bow like this is elite this is one of the elite bows made so if you look at like the top end bows of any bow company, this is it. This is the top end bow of PSE. And it shoots, it shoots like it. It shoots, it's got features that the cheaper bows don't have. So if you look at the PSE drive, it's got a similar cam system. This has got adjustable draw length. It's got metal limb pockets. It's got carbon cable rod. It's got multiple um, holes here. It feels better. Um, oh, I'm going to say also you can take this rubber grip off if you don't like the rubber grip. Most people shoot with the rubber grip on because they like the rubber grip as far as it's, you're not going to feel it hot or cold. You're not going to, your hands not going to be sweaty on it. Um, so you can take it off if you want to shoot straight off the riser. So again, we're going to draw this back. So it's very hard here, getting lighter. See, it's like dropping, dropping, dropping. But to let this bow down, it's 90% let off when I'm back here, so I'm only holding 60. Like, it doesn't tear my shoulder out letting the bow down. Like, you're holding six pounds, so you're not holding a lot back here, so you kind of got, you feel like you're going to push it down, but it's, it's not a valley where it wants to rip your shoulder out. It's a very gentle into the valley. Now what's that going to do for you if you're hunting or target shooting? It means if you're aiming a target at a target and you're drawing this bow back, you're going to be able to aim this target the entire time. If a bow drops off quickly, your sight pitch is going to move. Um, this is it's a very nice draw cycle, very solid. So I think you'll get a bit of speed out of it, but it's, it's comfortable. So let's shoot this through a chronograph and see what sort of speeds we get. So the arrow I'm shooting, this is my target arrow. This is a 340 VAP. It's got 140 grain point in the front end. So it's much heavier than a bow you'd normally shoot with a, um, through a speed machine, uh, through a chronograph. So I suppose right at 338, in my testing of the 2020 NXTs, they were, they were, they were much faster than published. Um, I think 338, I'd be hoping for about a 280 out of this bow with this arrow. Two, six, four. Now the arrow I normally shoot. This is a velocity uh, from Gold Tip. I think it's 324 grains per second. <laughs> 324 grains. It's a 400 spine, 80 grain point. Two eighty nine. And this is a this is a 3D HV from Victory. These are things are fast. Now I'm not getting the speeds. I'm kind of getting speeds 10 feet under what I'd ex be expecting, which would suggest to me that I probably don't have the 29 inch draw length that I'd be expecting. Now my draw length on bows are about 29. This feels pretty comfortable comfortable to me in the draw cycle. Um, sometimes I shoot 28 and a half, but it feels pretty good. Three 
310. Now 310's, 310's pushing, so that's a, 310's pretty good. I don't know if I've shot much faster than a 310, so, um, 310's good. So that was a 3DHV, 400, 400 spine, 80 grain point, those things fly. So 338, I think it's pretty much on the money. I think 310's pretty good. Um, right. Um, okay, so things about this bow that I'd probably like to see changed and altered. Comes with a tag. This kind of tells you everything about the bow, the um, draw length, that it's adjustable from 26 to 31. Factory set at 29, the brace height 6 and 3 quarters, axle axles 34, 90% let off, string sizes. Look, and people say, why don't you take this off your bow? Well, it's because it's got all the information on it. If I mean, put the stuff on the bottom limb with the sticker. I'd really like that. I'd like a sticker on the bottom limb saying what letter is what draw length. Because, like, I'm getting, I'm doing this review and I'm like, what draw length am I on? It's on letter G can't work out what G is from that so A's 31 and a half B's 31 C D is 20 29 D E I don't know see and then my problem is like if you're working in a shop it's like well G is which what drawing is it now you might be able to work that out, but like, it'd be much easier to have all the letters on the bottom limb with a little sticker going, bang, there it is. Um, there's a set of stickers for an EVL 31 with the EC cam. They're all standard. It comes in a 60 or a 70. Bang, stick that sticker on. Because once this is off the limb, once this is off the bow, what parish bow is this? Now, on the PSE website, they have specs, and they say what the numbers mean. See here, there's a 102 on this limb, so on the top left, so this limb's a 103, this one's a 107, down the bottom's a 102, and a 104. So the heaviest limb's there, which is interesting. On a lot of bows, the bottom, bottom thing, the bottom right is the heaviest, but on this bow, the bottom top right is the heaviest. So PSE do their limbs in a different order for different bows to do, you know, balancing and talking. Um, but with the numbers, the 102, it, it tells you whether it's a 60 or 70 pound bow, basically. So that's on their PSE website. But I think it'd be nice if it was on the bow because you don't want to look up stuff. Like you're in a shop. You've got this hanging on the wall without a tag because it's second hand. What poundage is it? Just, I, it just stick a 20 cent sticker on it um, all right so with that let's go back and shoot at 80 meters and see how well we'll shoot so I'm back here at 18 meters we're about to shoot now how do I think I'll shoot with this bow I think I'll shoot pretty good it's got over a 32 inch axle axle which is easy to shoot bows under 30 inches become harder to shoot because it's quite aggressive the angle on the string um, from my feeling Brace height of close to 7 inches is going to make the pin very stable, so it's going to be stable. It's got great balance. It's got a positive draw stop on the back. I think I'll shoot this thing well, so let's see how it goes. It's a mild bit of wind around. It's not bad. I'm going to say the pin stays on the 10. Doesn't move out of it. Um, there was all birds on my lawn just before taking that shot. They, they flew off at the shot. So it's quiet, the bow. There's no vibration. So I don't know if it was the noise of the arrow hitting the target or the noise of the bow, but the birds flew off. Now I've got people who have got the uh, NXT 33, NXT 35, EVL 34s and they say they shoot just as well and maybe better with this bow than the PSE Supra which is their 
specialized target mode. That one felt a bit, didn't feel as good. Um, so why are they going to shoot better with, and why did that shot not feel as good? There's a reason why that shot didn't feel as good, but why do people shoot better with their hunting bow than their target bow? One, this bow's got less vibration when you shoot the bow, so it doesn't jump forward in your hand like a Supra. Now the jumping forward in your hand doesn't affect the way the bow shoots, it's just a feel. Um, this bow's got higher let off, although some of them shoot with low let off. Twisting my body and not lining up dead straight. I'm, I normally stand a bit to the right. The sun's right there, so. And there is a bit of wind around. It's, um, Look, the bow's the bow's beautiful. As far as all top of, I'm gonna say all top of boat range bows feel good. The top line elites feel good. The top line Botex feel good. I haven't shot the top line bears yet. Um, and the person who tried fired his bow has got a top line Hoyt, um, and he shoots this all now all the time. Um, look, top line stuff shoots good. This is no exception. It's simple. Price point is a little bit cheaper than it's than their competitors. So PSE is a little bit cheaper than you know your elites, a little bit cheaper than your than your Hoyts, or well, a lot cheaper than your Hoyts, a lot cheaper than your Matthews. Matthews, you've got modules um, that you've got to buy to change drawing. Uh, the grip feels really comfortable. I'm liking the grip. It's not to say you might shoot you, you might shoot better without the grip on it, but I know like one of the top shooters in the state here has got one of these, and he shot a perfect indoor score with it, and he shoots it with the grip on because he just said he finds it um, really comfortable. I feel like these are all going to the 10. I don't know if they are, but they feel like they're all in the 10. I just... I want to shoot more arrows and I have no more arrows to shoot. I want to keep shooting this bow. I'm like, I love this bow. This bow is awesome. Um, I'm just reflecting on the fact that Dan Jasser shot a 702 or 704 at, at a shoot with this bow with pretty blue and white limbs. I'm like, in one of my videos, I said I should have signature bows. I would buy a signature bow, a signature Dan bow, because this thing is, feels great. Okay, so I'm up here at the target. I look, I can obviously see the arrows now, and I can almost get my whole fingers around all the arrows. Now, one at the top, there's two at the top, which is, you know, I knew what I did wrong with the shot, and we won't go into it. But didn't feel good. But these ones in the middle, they felt good. It's just, and I tell you what, it felt easy, and I, and that's. One of my friends in the state, he's got he's got this Supra, so he's one of the best archers in Australia. Um, like he's you know shot one Australian titles and stuff. 
he's got one of these bows and he's got the Supra. And I said, look, how do you shoot with both of them? And he said, actually, I shoot the, the NXT really well. Maybe he's got the John Dudley one, I don't know. Which, he's got one of these, right? And um, he said, I shoot them really well. And he goes, I shoot about the same. And he said, I might even shoot better with the hunting bow than the Supra. I'm like, well, why don't you shoot? And he goes, well, the Supra kind of keeps me honest. He said, because it's got lower lead off, he said, I feel like I'd get lazy shooting the EBL. And like seeing this, like that was just so easy. Like it was just sitting back there, there's no pressure. It's like, I'm not shaking. With the Supra, I'm like, because I'm holding more weight, I'm shaking more. And if you saw my video where I moved from a 60 pound bow to a 50 pound bow, I'm like, oh, this is gold. I don't even shake anymore. I'm just stable. And I shot really well at the Nationals with the 50 pound bow. Now, that is really, like, I've got a whisker biscuit, I've got a five pin sight, I've got, the bow's not tuned, it's a D loop, I, like, there's no peep sight on the bow. Look, you rock up to pretty much any club in Australia, um, and you can shoot groups like that, you're probably gonna be top of the club. Um, and I'm not, I'm not bragging, but that's really good shooting. And I suppose, I, my point on that is, people get caught up in everything. They get caught up in the tuning, they get caught up in the release aids, stabilizers, what peep do I put on, what arrows do I put on, oh, what should I, you know, how long should my stabilizer be, how much weight should I put on, but everything is minor. And when I say minor, it's minor. And what you're trying to do is buy a couple of points when you do stuff. It gets back to you being able to shoot and what I'm going to say about the EVL 34, it's so easy to shoot. It's so easy to shoot. And it's fast. It's, it's a fast bow. And what that means, and people are going to say, well, speed doesn't matter that much. And you're kind of right, but you're not kind of right also. Because by it being fast, it means I can shoot less poundage to get the same sort of energy out of the bow. And now for target archery, you're limited to 60 pound. Now, so by it, for a bow to be faster, what it means is you can shoot a heavier arrow, which is going to have less wind drift in the thing. It's going to have more momentum to get to the target. Now, on a, on a non-windy day, it probably won't matter if you're shooting 30 pound or 60 pound. But on a day where there's a bit of wind, you're going to get more wind drift with a lighter poundage bow. Just, that is so good. And I love the, fa I love the fact that you can fit different modules to the bow. So you can buy yourself an EVL 34 with high let off, because that's how it comes. And then you can fit the low let off modules to it to get more of that back tension that we were talking about before. Um, so you can change the feel of the bow. Now, I suppose what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go on Matthews. Matthews have modules that you buy and you fit them to the bow to change draw length and let off and even poundage, which is like good. But my problem is, well, my, even with this, you've got to buy them. I don't know if I'm 20 and a half or 30, so I'm going to have to spend 80, 90 dollars to fit a module of this to see if I prefer 29 or if I prefer 20 and a half. Um, where with this, if I can change whatever draw length and the bow will suit anyone, so it's easier to sell as a shop perspective, it's easier to sell second hand. The let off is adjustable which is nice so if I want the low let off modules well I'm gonna to have to go and spend 120 bucks to change the feel of this bow that's not as harsh as having to buy a module for every type of feel I want to experiment with so if I want to experiment with 28 and a half and 29 and draw length does make a difference it really does in the way the bow feels and I suppose I started this video saying well this bow felt comfortable comfortable to me I don't know what the draw length is but it felt comfortable so I'm just going to go with that it's on 29 it may be 20 and a half but this group that's the first you can see that was the first group I've shot now the target on the on the left here this is me shooting recurve uh, last night um, but I thought well I'll shoot a fresh target here for this review so you can see I don't kind of you know lie when I do videos that's the way I shoot look that's a good <laughs> that's a really good group and look I'm going to say how good this group is compared to how I normally shoot this is better than I shoot with my 
the 60 pound white Supra, I'm not shooting that well with at the moment. Like I'm not shooting bad with it, um, but I'm not shooting that well with it. The 50 pound Supra all set up, yeah, I'm shooting that well. And I'm not throwing these arrows up the top here, but I might. But that's got all stabilizers, it's got scopes, it's got peeps. And these ones at the top were more about the alignment. I wasn't quite aligned with the target correctly. Um, and there is a bit of wind and comparing indoor to outdoor, but overall, just awesome. So when you think about buying a bow, like this is top end. So you don't need top end, but if you've got the money and you're like, you're into archery and you're like, I want the coolest bow. I tell you what, you buy the 34 or the 32 and in 10 years time, that is still a cool bow. I've got the PSE, the EVL, EVL, the Evolution. I think I brought it 10 years ago. It's still a good bow. I don't shoot it now because new bows have progressed and like I pulled it out and I shot it a few months ago, but bows have progressed and there's nothing wrong with that bow, but it's still a cool bow. It's still nice machining. It still feels nice to shoot. It's just the new ones are better. But uh, there's a Robin Hood that I did there. So, and my friend in, in um, England will say, that's not a Robin Hood because you gotta go straight down the back end. Look, as far as I'm concerned, that's a Robin Hood. Um, but, um, like, cool. Yeah. So I'm Stephen Hand from Archery Supplies. That's the PSE EVL 34. It's just awesome. I need more of them because they're really good in my shop. So I better go and order some more. I think I might order some Target ones too because it's, it's good. Really, really good. Nicely, I'm going to say it's nicely balanced. So you don't need to add as much weight to your stabilizers. Um, the Supra is back balanced, so you add weight to the front stabilizers to balance it up. And you do that for target specific, but that's just, that's just awesome. Really awesome. Thanks for watching. Bye.